cover, we got to get to this slide, but we can't get to this slide till we get to some other stuff. It's really good to see you guys, all of you. Thanks for being here. Yesterday, we talked about a genteel, a genteel, a, a, a genteel, a, a genteel materials is what we discussed yesterday. I'd like to remind you all that uh, watching me try and pronounce words that I've only read a lot uh, is part of the fun of the show. And it's, you get the opportunity to be, hey, that's not how you say agencil, agencil. So, you know, enjoy the fun. Feel free to prune my lips, correct me below. Uh, I am not a scientist. I'm not even playing one on TV. I'm a, I'm a, I'm not even, I'm barely a live streamer, seriously. I'm a writer who just, living in a world where no one reads. Doom, 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 doom. No one reads anymore Cause there's people like me singing On the internet doom, doom, yeah, yeah So nobody reads again doom, 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 doom. Unless it's a pamphlet or a post of 255 characters. Okay, I've, now I've pushed away anyone who shouldn't be here. Now we're ready to get some business, guys. Number two is stem cells. Yesterday, we just discussed agential materials. These are cells and tissues that can be manipulated as agential, agent, man, I wish I could say that right. Agential materials by targeting their homeostatic capabilities and pattern memory. And we discussed this yesterday. I, I've, I was trying to convey to you that your amount of association, the amount of <clears throat> remembering who you are, is sort of a way of downloading a GPS map of, of the entire map of you, right? You're living inside yourself. You're a cursor, cursing away. God, oh, it's hilarious. He's like laughing at you because you're on your own desktop. And you're like, why did you do this to me? And God's like... Why are you talking to yourself? But he knows you can't hear him because you're you drank the amnesia. You drank the the memolo the memologist potion of, of amnesia. And so the second so yesterday we only talked about the idea that a cell could enter into a mode, a homeostatic mode where it switches, it decouples. If you remember we saw I'm not muted, it decouples. And, and that when it decouples, the skin cell grows its own sovereignty. It's like, fuck you guys. I'm living on an island. And you're, you know, maybe you got a monohull. Maybe. Maybe you're cruising around Tahiti. I don't know what you're doing in there. But you're using your cilia. You're, the thing that you use to use to push mucus uh, collectively with all the other rowboat in the uh, Viking ship that you used to live in called the esophagus, you've now been decoupled. And you're still alive. You still have the exact same concept all that's happened is that you've left your company you were either fired you retired or you were uh laid off right whatever it is you decoupled and the moment you decoupled you didn't lose who you were you didn't lose your brain you had a memory that you used to push mucus you, you're like back in my days on the mucus bonds and me and my friends would sit there and just paddle that mucus Paddle it up. Paddle up. Don't worry, you're not late, Adrian. We're just talking about paddling mucus up the mucus membrane of the throat. Isn't this a great topic? And, and that that was you for a while. Then you became decoupled. You uh, started to notice there's a lot of propaganda going around the throat. Everyone in the throat's like, hey, hey, we like to drink. We like to eat, but don't throw up. And you're like, yeah, this. I need more out of life. Like, I need more. And, and what do you know? Someone comes along, scrapes your tongue, pulls you off the cell wall. Pulls you off the, the, that, that place you lived, that sweet spot on the tongue. And all of a sudden, you're now living life at the uh, end of a tongue dispenser, right? You're like Titanic. I'm free as a bird. And that, and that being there, you're growing your own silly. You're doing your own thing. And that, and that you've decoupled. You've entered back into a homeostatic mode. Now, when you're in homeostatic mode, you can learn up to one of, one of 20 tricks. There's more than 20. But the body has... Roughly 200, I should say, 200. The body roughly has 200 different tricks that a cell can turn into. It's like a pose. And so you, the homeostatic cell that separated yourself, you get to be anything. 
If you've always wanted to be a gonad cell, you can you can be a gonad cell. If you've always wanted to be a pancreas, my kind of my favorite, you could uh, switch modes and become a pancreas. I, I actually think liver is the best because you're going to be able to regenerate. You're going to have ninety percent of you is going to be able to regenerate yourself. This is the uh, organ of Prometheus, by the way. We've discussed this and how the fuck the Greeks knew that your the ancient Greeks knew that your liver was the only part of your body that had the same homeostatic agential, agential, a, a, agential material. What is that? If you think about agential, it's just basically I'm my own agent, right? You're giving it its power back. You're saying, dude, you can't stay in the cubicle anymore. And, and the guy's in denial. He's like, what do you mean? And they're like, well, you've been fired. And, and that's not, really what happens is, is we've given you pyroelectricity, right? We've like enabled you to be man go out on your own, sail the world. And you're like, but I really love, I love shoveling mucus. It's so great. And look, here comes some more Cheetos. We never get those. Oh my God, here's Cheetos again. Oh, quick. We have to shovel more mucus so we can have more Cheetos. And now you're free. This is terrifying. A lot of people are like, I don't want to live on this land. I want to go back to the esophagus. Esophagus. I could do a whole musical here on this. Esoph. I won't do that to you. 200 different stem cells that you could morph into. Probably more. But the body itself, these are just some. Sperm cell, egg cell, pancreas cell, muscle cell, heart cell, blood cell, brain cell, lung cell, bone cell, liver cell, kidney cell, sperm cell. Ooh. And if you've been watching the show, you know that the sperm cell and the egg cell are the only cells, the only uh, eukaryotics in your body that are missing a chromosome. They're like, oh, where is my missing chromosome? And so built into your body is this natural state of missing something, but it's only within two cells, and those two cells happen to be your gonads, right? You got your male gonads, and you got your female gonads. And, uh, hey, you take those, you take them all to the ball, <laughs> right? The debutante's ball, we're all four. I don't need to tell you how this works. You guys have probably diddled other people. You're one of you's maybe having sex right now. And I gotta admit, if you're, if you're getting it on to James Drew Life, I I don't know how to feel about that. It's like I, I'm so I'm happy for you guys. Hope you guys are do, you guys are doing good. Yeah, yeah. It's a good stamina there. I'm gonna get some play by play. And uh, we got the uh, partner on top. Uh, not gonna genderize these people because you know who knows, right? And oh yeah, he's looking in. He's now looking back at the radio, going, "Why did I leave this on? Oh my god, I need to turn this off." And the other and the other one's like, "No, I really like it when he talks this way. It feels like he's in the room, and I kind of like voyeuristic stuff." And the other guy's like, "How did he plan this? How the fuck did he plan this?" And the whole time, holographic medicine, the secrets are being lost because I'm giving commentary on two people that are making love during James True Life, and it's not even happening. Which I think is kind of the theme of what my next slide is. To be completely honest with you, wouldn't that be amazing if the next slide was somehow related? It's not. That's okay. Thank you for being here on James True Live. Yesterday, I showed you this silk moth on the right, and he was like, yeah, hello there. And, and that him, along with, for whatever fucked up reason, horseradish, and you guys could have checked the article yesterday. I did link that in the description. That him, horseradish sauce, and a bottle of hydrogen peroxide uh, kind of uh, kind of got it on once and they ended up being able to regenerate a whole bunch of other cell tissue. Somehow it's able to agentially, agentally reinvigorate and stimulate growth. We discussed the differences and successes, right? Between the human all the way up from human is sort of like the, the weakest at doing this. But then as you move up the scale into say salamander or, uh, lizard or starfish, uh, it, it would go, probably the safest would be to say it would go human, starfish, lizard, uh, salamander. And, and that, but there's more. And, and, and that what's requiring more, I'm going to show you the secrets of growth. You're gonna, some of you are going to think on said electricity, and I'm, I'm sorry, this is not going to work out. <laughs> I'm going to say the word electricity and you're just going to, that's all you're going to hear. And that's okay. That's why we're here. We are here to misconstrue people. Uh, someone else said that I thought that uh, Greek was older than Hebrew. And no, I said paleo Hebrew is older than Greek. It's a paleo Hebrew. This is like scrawling on the rock. And it's a big difference, right? Big, big difference. Big difference. 
And, and it's okay. I'd rather I'd rather be wrong than witnessed than not wrong at all. Someone said that besides me. There's more of this stuff. It's in deer antler velvet. Deer antler velvet is a soft, fuzzy-looking substance made of cartilage. There's that cartilage again. Remember, we talked about that with the sharks with the shark fin yesterday. And I mentioned collagen, but I distinctly told you I don't think collagen's it. But I want you to think about collagen because a lot of people are telling you, oh, it's collagen, collagen, collagen. And I'm about to tell you that the reason why people think it's collagen is because collagen is related to cartilage. And the reason why people think that it's cartilage is about what I think that I'm about to tell you. Now, this is just my my little crazy theories. And keep in mind, I just visualized two people getting it on while they're watching Dave's True Live. So, you know, great assault. But... This deer antler velvet has the exact same thing. It's nicknamed velvet due to its texture, which resembles a velvet fabric. The cartilage helps oxygen-rich blood reach the antlers to provide nourishment for growth. This is the best guess we've had. This is a huge uh, uh, medicinal medicine uh, in China, uh, all over the world, really. A lot of people are like, it has too much estrogen. Uh, There's all kinds of theories about what it has and what it doesn't have. But I'm about to tell you, I think these two are related. It is the silk from the silkworm on the right that for whatever reason is able to stimulate regenerative growth. And it is the velvet on the deer antlers on the left. It is the cartilage inside the fin that allows a shark to completely rebuild its dorsal. But that all of these are architecturally doing something they're not doing them because of some magic substance they're doing it because these substances have an architecture to them and that's what i want to suggest to you today silk is soft it is so soft it's even silky they say we have a word called silky it's literally like oh it's really really soft and when you think about what soft is some of you Maybe the closest I can get you here is thread count, right? Egyptian thread count. You're like, oh my God, it's the Egyptian thread count. It's not the Pakistani thread count because those fuckers can't count. But the Egyptians, those fuckers know how to count. And they count wrong. They're always undercounting. So it's even higher is probably what we tell ourselves. The smoothest cotton is sometimes called Egyptian cotton. And really what that means is just it's, it's high thread count. And the thread count produces... Here's, 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 here's the... Th- the thought that I want you to go, you can leave right after this if you want. It is the structure of the thread that delivers an electrical impulse. The impulse is not, is not the electricity. I'm not telling you that electricity does it. I'm telling you that the shape of the antenna of the long thread count being stretched from one side of the bed to the other creates a static antenna it collects electricity, and due to the uh, the conductivity of the single thread, as it's stretched from one location to the other, the conductivity creates a natural capacitor. Capacitor is simply, really, the, the most easiest uh, technology you can imagine. Some of you have seen the capacitor. It's sort of like a rolled-up tube inside of a, a circuit, and that capacitor is just paper. And then on either side of the paper is an alkaline or a base, and that the separation between, the paper is separating positive from negative. And and, and what makes it work is the length of the paper. The longer the paper, the longer the strip inside the capacitor. This strip has no moving parts inside of it. And you can take a pulse, an electrical pulse, a, a, a surge of electrons, and feed it into the capacitor, and the capacitor will drink it. It will drink it, and it will hold it in its mouth, like a trip monk. And it can do this forever. It can do this forever. When I was a child, one of the big stories was, hey, don't let your kids find a television in the forest. And I was f- fascinated by this because I found out there was death ray equipment inside. There was dangerous technology inside. And I was like, but they're, it's not plugged in. It's like, no, it's still still there and I was like this is this is interesting I thought so I rigged it up and I killed a guy his name's Kevin I've never confessed about this I'm letting you know now I killed Kevin with it I know this didn't happen but but it, it's the capacitors inside they're like really big and they're really thick and they will fuck you up because they can hold a static charge for indefinitely I say indefinitely because it's not definite 
but it's indefinitely. It's it's not about uh, uh, well, you get it. It's just a difference. And so when we start to think about uh, what makes the silk, I think it's that, guys. I think it's the long, strandular, but thin nature of silk. It has so many, has such a high thread count. And that the distance between the poles is giving you the electrical difference. And it's the electrical difference that seems to be the thing that stimulates uh, what we're talking about here. That word that I'm having trouble with, agential materials that they become agential through polarizing them. But it's not electricity that's doing it. It is the capacity of difference that's being inserted on it. And that, that the deer velvet has the same property. That the reason why the deer antlers grow so fast is certainly because of the deer velvet, but the reason why the deer velvet works, the reason why deer velvet is soft is for the same thing. You have a an architecture of several fibers that are directly connected to the blood and directly connected to the outside world. And that, that difference, the polarity of the difference, make those fuckers grow. It makes them grow fast. So fast that they're shedding that outer layer off. Deers are all the time. It looks kind of creepy when you see it. You're like, oh my God, what happened? Did that deer just like maul someone and, and kill him? Maul would mean, you know, did the deer go to the mall? And like run through the mall. And it's, 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 this is kind of backed up because lightning does the same thing that lightning will, will make mushrooms grow. And that lightning can stimulate plant growth by indirectly providing readily available nitrogen to the soil through a process called nitrogen fixation. And it's not that you're hitting the ground and putting electricity into it. It's that you're running the, the fucking thunderbolt of Zeus alongside a place that used to have continuity and now it doesn't anymore. So what happens? All the nitrogen in the air separates and it falls to the ground and now you have a nitrogen-rich atmosphere where you did not before. Therefore, after a lightning storm, the reason why your garden looks so beautiful, looks so vibrant, is because it's been bathed in difference. <clears throat> Not electricity, indifference. That now there's a fresh, powdery coating of nitrogen on top of everything. And that causes the soil to be activated because it's the opposite. The charge, <laughs> those two things try and equalize. And the only result that can, res that can happen from that equalization, if you think about it, all the sunlight that's being absorbed at the tops being pushed down and all the water from the bottoms being pushed up and you end up <sighs> growing. Not just your plant, but your deer antler. Not just your deer antler, but your dorsal fin, cartilage. Really, really just smart architecture. It has the right amount of spacing and the right amount of strength to give your ears and all the other parts of you the 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 pliability but also the the tear strength there's another word i don't know for uh, that gives you so much strength and that those fibers are doing the exact same thing another really good proof of this i don't have a slide for when your brain is developing the gray matter is typically like the broccoli ends the 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 fluted ends of your of your cabbage Th that gray matter is more about the uh, nodules of thought itself there's where your neurons are the, i mean everything's covered in neurons but but this is where what we think about thought happens is the white matter is actually the telephone wires that connect these different continents in your brain the constellations are wired through these white matter, the white matter would be the silky threads. Now, your brain stops growing gray matter maybe 10 years before your white matter stops. That once your gray matter is built, most of your intelligence, most of your wisdom is happening because you were unplugging white wires from one region and going, no, 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 I, that's what I thought of was the case, but phew, this is going to be better for me. This is what I thought I was told, but this is going to be better for me. This is what I thought I was told, but this is going to be better for me. And so the rewiring of it, that's why both people are right a long time ago when you heard them say, your brain never grows, you're fucked, man. You're never going to change. And other people are like, your brain is micro is elasticity, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, which one's right? It's like, they're both right. 
They're both right. Your wiring, you're going to be able to change a lot faster than your gray matter, though, because your white matter, your 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 wiring is has to change. As you grow, so too does your understanding. And I think that's probably how you end up pulling electricity from certain parts of your brain you didn't have before. It's the capacitance there stored up that you're able to tap back into. So lightning definitely stimulates regeneration, but it's not the electricity that does it. It's the difference that it leaves. It's such a shocking difference. This is the Washington Monument. It struck uh, a lot. It struck so much that they had to pull out the, uh, the pyramidion on top and replace it. And that there's sort of a northwestern bias for the electricity. And that the reason why this collects electricity is because the same thing. It's a long, thin, pokey thing. An obelisk is the most esoteric symbol of collection of power. The shape itself. The height in the atmosphere and the base has a connected root. The, the granite itself, believe it or not, is able to transmit an electrical charge and that the ions or the electrons, depending on which framework you're thinking about in this way, are able to transmit between the two. But the only thing that would allow the transmission to happen is difference. Difference. That's probably why in Heliopolis, the city of Om that you've heard about in the Bible, they would dip the very top, just the very top of those obelisks in electrum. That they, they understood electrolysis, that they had developed this sort of copper tin kind of shiny silvery kind of substance and that they could they would place that at the very top and you could picture that in the morning that those things are hit with light with the sunlight but more importantly when they're hit with sunlight they're charging they're charging i would put forward to you that in a world where there's no light pollution in a world where where our eyes would see the face of Noah glowing, as we talked about yesterday. I think it was yesterday, maybe the day before. It's probably possible to imagine that the city of Heliopolis would glow. That throughout the day, that obelisk would collect uh, sunlight on the top, would slowly move its way down, and then at night, due to the cooling of the atmosphere, it, it, it could switch... And it's very possible that you could imagine this thing, if it wouldn't glow, it might have some kind of, it definitely would have some kind of electrostatic charge. I showed you yesterday that the photons that come out of your skin are, are very, very discernible. They're just weak. But when I say they're weak, they're weak thinking in the realm of where we are. We are used to some bright, bright light all the time. We don't even have a functioning nighttime anymore. It's almost impossible to find a place to go where there's no light pollution. And so with that, we're losing all the, the uh, resolution in some frames. We're certainly gaining other, other resolution too. It's not all bad. But I think we start to miss the subtle energy. The Lemurian idea of you having an aura is true. What we lack is being down at that resolution where we're discerning such subtle differences that are like a thousand times less visible than what we currently see now. But it's still there. I even described to you Melum and how it appeared that people would have a shimmering in Sumer, that the, the idea of the word is called knee, which is hilarious because of the Holy Grail, the whole night, Suze knee. And that as soon as they say knee, they're scared. And it turns out that's a fucking Sumerian legend that, 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 that the ruler was, was called, he had a terrifying charisma called knee. I just think it's interesting that the Washington Monument on the left and the shaft of the Great Pyramid on the right, I mean, it's just, man, they look the same. I mean, I get it that there's a robot here on the right one and it's drilled that hole. But the, the thing is, is that this is just two terminals and that these are copper. <clears throat> In these holes, they're actually copper pins. Uh, I'm talking about on the pyramid over here. And that those copper pins... Uh, you know, this is this is some electrical, electrostatic uh, technology here. NASA, I mean, if if I don't know, man, it's so hard to figure out what they're doing versus what they say they're doing. But uh, this is actually a true phenomenon. It just happened to be that the best picture I could find was a NASA one. But this is a static balloon, and, and you emit this balloon, and let's say you're uh, flying through uh, the air, and you were to uh, dangle a giant ball from a wire from a plane and that you would have a collector and an emitter simply by having an antenna 
simply by having something long, right? So the difference in the air is going to collect the nitrogen again. It's going to move it down, and then it's going to come back up. And, and that all these things are going to stimulate growth because it's sort of like electrical witness in a way. We discussed piloerection, and we talked about the word sete, if I'm pronouncing that right, and that, and that these are all the, just some of the many, many different varieties of antenna that we have on our body and that we use them to uh, electricate, uh, electrically understand, I should say, our world. Lordosis is a, uh, an act of the spine. When the spine is placed into a supine position, it collects electricity, and that electricity is, actually turns you on. And that, that believe it or not, when, a, when, a, when you do yoga, and you've got like a yoga instructor who's like, hello, welcome, I will touch ladies in very personal places. And that it is all... It is, none of it is, uh, it is, uh, what's that word? Conjugal, no, not conjugal, it's, uh, you get it. Insert your joke here, we got a lot to cover. But yeah, this pile election happens when we fear for our life, or when we are about to score. That your body will, will enter into pile erection in two states. First of all, when you're fearful for your life, and second of all, when you're about to score. Why would both of those elicit the same activity and i think this this i think this is what really proves my point the reason why piloerection is activated during uh when you're about to score or when you're about to die is because you want to collect more electricity so you can render this moment with more frames per second you can hallucinate it with even more accuracy. And the only way you can do that is not by having more electricity. It's by suddenly collecting more electricity that you didn't have before. So in a way, all of us are not piloerecting, not piloerecting, not piloerecting, not piloerecting, simply waiting for the emergency to occur when we would want to hit those haunches. And all of the antenna over all the pores in our body, our light holes in our body, would, would be erect. And because they were not erect, you understand? It's because they are not erect. It's not because they're erect that they collect electricity. It's because they were not erect, and then they were. I'm probably really triggering a YouTube sensor about, yeah, I said erect like 12 times. I think we should just kind of like not monetize this one. And that's fine. I'm just glad you guys are here just pointing that out. I said the word erection a lot. Yeah, I did. Um, so another important factor, I think, that even proves this even more is understanding what the PAG is. When we, a, a PAG is a version, a, a, part, a, a part of the brain stem at the very top. And when you squeeze or stimulate this PAG with, believe it or not, with electricity, uh, you start to cry. And when we analyze what, what crying is, it seems to be an overload at the PAG. The, and we experience this by watching on Golden Pond or, or some kind of movie where something very emotional happens. We watch that, uh, that scene and the emotions are, are higher than we're used to and the pag kicks on and it starts to absorb the emotions using the peri uh, uh, periodontal gray matter to secrete what you and I call tears. And that these tears, they have a higher version of protein when they are emotional versus if you're just like clearing the tear, which means that if you think about what protein is, this really gives you a, a thought about what really eating red meat is. You're eating the more essential essence, essential, essential part of the experience. The experience itself, when you eat something that tastes good, if it's salt, for example, you are, are freebasing those memories without having to live through them, for example, all the memories that are stored in that salt. The proteins, you are freebasing all the grazing that that cow had to do to save and build this little packet of, of nutrition. And, and that the intensity that he placed into his own survival is really what you're eating. You're eating something more emotional than we think. All the flavors that food has are giving you the emotional calorie count. You just don't notice that yet. 
So a cookie will have 400 calories in a small piece because it, it has so much more of an intensity with the salt and the sugar. Those are just crystals of memories that have been built through a lot of fucked up shit that happened in Barbados. A, a lot of all the other history that makes that, that sugar cane grow is probably sort of similar to how the PAG is stimulated itself. That, that just like we have tears that come out of our eyes, so too does Gaia have sugar cane that pops out of its soil. And so we can taste the protein in the tears the same way you can taste the sweetness and the sugar in the raw. You're, you're looking at the same electrical information. The intensity of an experience. If you're curious more about the PAG, I'm not going to go into this, but I have a series called Talking to Reptiles. It goes way into this. Chinese researchers claim electroculture works as theorized. And they set up a a greenhouse and they plugged electrodes into the ground and they were trying to show that that if you electrify a greenhouse that the plants grow and, and when you find this you'll find all a bunch of stuff you know yeah it works it works and then you look a bit harder and you'll find people that are like no it doesn't work it doesn't work and then you'll find someone like this on the left this is a doctor out of oregon and it's funny because they actually say so it doesn't work it's all bullshit however further research determined that lightning fixes atmospheric nitrogen into a solid form which dissolves in raindrops and enters the soil system this is undoubtedly responsible for the important improvements in plant growth this is what i mean guys by <laughs> guys you gotta you gotta be careful because this article on the left is actually telling you that electroculture doesn't work. Horticulture doesn't work. And, and to cover her own ass, I don't mean to pick on her, that's why I left her name out, but to cover her own ass, she actually has to put in parentheses, like, the only reason why you would need to read the article. And, and, and really what it is is, no, no, it does work. <laughs> it absolutely does work. And that further research determined that lightning fixes atmospheric nitrogen into a solid form nitrate, which dissolves in raindrops and enters the soil system. So it does work. We are living in a paradigm where there's no such thing as an electric body. And we're living in that paradigm because we came from a medicine of tradition. And the tradition of medicine was invented before we knew what electricity was. It just happened before. So all the fixations about how the, how the heart works, for example, that it pumps blood, that it pumps blood, that it pumps blood. People aren't trying to lie to you. They came up with that shit before they knew what electricity was. This is why me, as someone who kind of has a lot of experience in philosophy, I don't spend a lot of time uh, like boring the shit out of you guys telling you what different philosophers think because honestly, when you review what they, what they read and what they talk about, what they cram down their throats, almost all these dead fuckers didn't even know what electricity was. Like they couldn't even fathom the concept of a wireless communication system like a radio. And that, that, that's going to inform their philosophy, which is why even though I majored in the shit and I could probably coast on how much I know about that, I don't because it just seems so pointless to me. It's just so naive. It's okay. I think studying philosophy is great. I mean, you'll have fun. But also, I think that if you're going to need to have enough courage to do what you have to do with every field, mine was philosophy. And I had to be like, why am I listening to this guy talk about the soul? He's, he's like stuck in this weird... The Trinity is the... It's just like, what, what are you, hi? What is wrong with you, dude? You know, oh, he's never heard of a radio. That's why. He's never fucking heard of one. So all of the what we call science is not science. It's mythology. It's mythology of what's been established. And what's been established is just what's written in a book. And you've, and you've, been, you've been raised like sheep. You're raised like a sheep. So the sheep's going to tell you there's no electric body. The sheep's going to tell you electricity doesn't make plants grow. The thinker in you is going to go, ah, oh, the lightning creates a difference, and the difference makes things grow. This is what I was talking about yesterday with regeneration. The reason why the salamander is able to regrow, not just, not just his shoulder, not just his elbow, not just his wrist, not just his fingers, but the bones inside, is because he's able to maintain the difference the entire time. That during the entire healing process, let's just call the stub negative. Let's just call it that. And it's much more complicated. This is more about chemical charge. But that as long as this is kept negative, this is why the horseradish sauce, I think, was part of the frog. It's, you got to watch yesterday. You're probably like, what are you talking about? It's like, I know. I, I'm freaked out by it too. But that this silkworm horseradish sauce with hydrogen peroxide was keeping a chemical negativity. 
and that the negativity was able to follow the stump all the way down until it grew back, that that was the secret. So the secret would be constantly hitting it with lightning, constantly lowering your pile of electric so you can raise again, constantly lowering your pile of electric so you can raise again. James, that sounds like sleeping. I know it does, doesn't it? And the fact that it sounds like sleeping is the biggest clue I have for you because I want you to understand that your emotions are feelings, my friends. They're feelings. All the emotions that you have are feelings. And that the feelings are being rendered to you real time in the only way that wouldn't cover your visor and block what you're doing. So it's kind of like you have climate control now in the car for the first time. And you get in the car, you're like, why is it cold? And it's like, because the air conditioner's on. You're like, holy fuck. Why is the air conditioning on? Because it's hot outside. Well, that's fucking brilliant. So I have an emotional reaction of being cool in here because it's hot outside? Yes, you do, James. Well, that almost seems paradoxical. I will dismiss the air conditioner because feelings are clearly bad and they are misguiding me. And you rip the air conditioner out. Then you find the emergency brake. Why is there a lever that if I pull, the car will stop? I am in this car to go. Well, it's in case you park on a hill. Well, I'm not parked on a hill. I will rip this technology out. That This is what we do to all our fieldings. Guilt. Like, oh, I must never have guilt. No, you want guilt. You want to feel guilt all the time. Do you know why? What did I tell you? What did I tell you? What did I tell you about electricity? It's the difference. The reason why you want to feel guilt all the time is because you're listening, not for the all the time, you're listening for the difference. And so if you can find your guilt and keep it, you now know hydrostatically how far away your guilt, your guilt, 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 librium is. And that this field of guilt, the moment you do something and you feel, oh, guilt's getting closer, guilt's getting closer. You now are able to use this as a scrying device. You're going to read the room. And this is an intuitive power. If I would get to it, James, you got to get to it. You already got 40 minutes down. I got to hurry. I got to get to this. I just want you guys to understand how this works. And I'm sorry, there's so little time. I just want you to have the technology so you can believe this and not just think that it's, it's distributed angst <laughs> from a collective that's living in an anti-world. Medicine is real. You're just missing the difference between, oh, electricity helps plants. No, no, it's lightning striking, changing the difference between plants is what heals them. The capacity to detect piloerection in the body is strongest on the forearms, on the back of the thighs, on the shins, and on the neck. While humans also experience piloelectrician uh, e erection, many of them are currently unable to detect emotional piloerection. So you can induce piloerection uh, synthetically through just temperature change, but you can also induce it emotionally. Remember, you can induce tears through, I have something in my eye and you, your, your tear duct will, will secrete, but that those tears will have like a lot less protein. And so, so too is the same with, with this piloelectric nature. I, to me, I think this is, in order to do this right, we need to embrace denial. But the moment you embrace denial, you're going to find your shame and you're going to know how far away it is. You're going to, oh, there's my shame bubble. And you're going to understand how important shame is to your, your sense of privacy. Even when you're drunk as fuck, people still know when they're naked. I mean, sometimes they don't. But for the most part, they still are able to maintain some basic, basic forms of dignity. And that I think that dignity is actually just part of this shame bubble, which you need. You're going to want this because if you know where your shame bubble is, you're going to notice when you've entered the room and someone's being shameful. You're going to notice it. You're going to feel it. And because you know where your shame bubble lies, because you know where it is, you're going to have much more confidence using this to gauge because you've gotten your, your preset. You've set what is the pace before this happens. This happens in lie detector tests, right? You set your baseline. But James, lie detecting isn't admissible in court. Good. I'm, I'm fine with that. It still holds true though. If you want to 
uh, solve a lie detector test, by the way. You just squeeze your butt the whole time. Like from the moment you walk in, you got to squeeze your butt and keep it squeezed the whole time. And then when they ask you the test questions, like what's your name, you actually let go of your butt and then you squeeze. And now they're, they're fucked. They're fucked. They can't get the, uh, uh, the, uh, the base, the base right. So when they ask you something uh, like really nervous, you've already set that, that, that your relaxation is tense and your tense is relaxation. This hasn't happened to me yet, but I've been, I've been squeezing my butt to practice in case I ever get caught moving things across the border that I shouldn't move. The biggest unknown in medicine today is that all medications have been tested on animals who do not harness neuromelanin or placebo. To me, this is the biggest thing. There's a reason why we choose mice. And it's not necessarily because they're cheap. It's because their uh, brain atlas utilizes the same dopamine pathways, but has no precursors to eliminate neuroinflammation. There's none. Mice are naturally albino. Some of you are going to dispute this and say, no, that's not true. There's certainly come some kind of mice. And I appreciate you. I just want you to know, this is me just trying to real quickly explain this. Rats have much better capabilities of this but that most of the mice that we use that we breed for pharmaceutical training, we purposely look for the ones that do not have the ability to deny things from themselves, which means, my friends, that all the pharmaceuticals that you've ever taken, that your mom's ever taken, that your dad's ever taken, that anyone in your neighborhood's ever taken, are based on a software that doesn't have denial in it. And I think as long as we keep denying our denial, funny, right? We're never going to be able to breach this next level of medicine, which is why I kind of get mad at the anti-zone people because I'm like, guys, it's cellular fucking absorption. Stop listening to charlatans and fucking come back to the table because there's some cool shit here waiting for us and we have to get past denial to do it. And how do you get past denial when you're following a charlatan? You can't. You can't do it. Charlatan's a clinical term, by the way. We'll have to go over that another time. These are all the animals that, that have neuromelanin, but if you want to screen capture this, you'll be able to read that the, I mean, that have melanin, but that the melanin is more on a uh, rudimentary kind of level. It's not utilized in our frontal lobes or in our brains or in our ability to deny existence of things. So a mouse, one of the reasons why the mouse is so effective is because he's always fucked. He's always stuck experiencing full tilt, like an albino that we talked about yesterday. Hurry up, James, hurry up. Part of the denial is these four slides, the fact that humans can't be giants, the fact there's an extra rib, the fact that, that we used to have six toes, the fact that there's a, a freaking triple 21st chromosome. All of these were first labeled as mutations, as wrong, as things that have happened that are horrible. And that only later in time have we actually realized and been able to prove these are not mutations. These do not fit into the category of mutations quite simply because they do not, they happen so frequently. And if they happen so frequently, there's probably a reason for it. There's probably a reason for that. Keep in mind that current medicine treats electrical incongruencies as a mutation, doesn't it? If it was to find that you were in the middle of regenerating your stump and analyzing the biofeedback of that thing, it would be trying to cauterize that wound, wouldn't it? That's the first thing medicine wants to do is I must cauterize this thing. I must end its desire to fucking grow because we don't do that shit around here, says the hospice tolls. It's a hospice toll. It's not a hospital. It's a hospice toll. And what Aquarius is showing us is that we are no longer going to be able to rely on state-run medicine because that's for hospice. That's for hospice. Which means all of our medical exploration can no longer... Uh, piggyback on, on the fucking innocent animals in a goddamn lab approved by the FDA that we have to experiment on ourselves. And by experimenting on ourselves, you were going to need denial to go into that cave, my friend. Take denial. We will go together. Because what you want is intuitive visualization. Blind sight is the ability to respond to visual stimuli without a visual cortex. This is a, a phenomenon which is quite frankly fascinating to me. And that despite the fact that you have no visual cortex, you are still able to perceive things even as intricate as the facial expression on a photograph that's been shown to you despite the fact that your eye has no cortex to process it. How the fuck does this happen? How the fuck does this happen? Now, it's not as bizarre as you might think because of the way that our eyes are wired. The information is there, but there's been a loss at the mind's ability to believe that it's there. 
And the only cure for this is to utilize something called blind sight. The ancient pathways that are in your eyes already that pre-exist, we just found these in 2005, by the way, so this is pretty cutting-edge research, but that we're able to determine the pathways, the ancient pathways, but the only way that we can tap into them, this is no exaggeration, this is in the literature, is by using our fucking intuition. That when we are teaching people how to maneuver through blind sight, you can achieve spatial objection detection, emotional facial expressions. All of these are perceivable despite, despite the ability to not consciously see them because of intuition that when we're teaching someone to see that that has this kind of injury they're told over and over i need you to guess roger i need you to guess and that the only way that roger can start to because you can't say i need you to use your intuition roger he's gonna be like what the fuck are you talking about and he's like no i need you to guess and when roger lets go of his logic He's dropping the focus, his assemblage point on the neocortex. This is very difficult for humans to do, by the way. Very difficult, which is why most people cannot do it. But that some people have and they're able to ride a fucking bike. They're able to do all kinds of things. I highly recommend my book, Black Eye Club. It covers this uh, much more detail than I can fit right here. And it's a great story. However, this point is, is that all of this intuitive, it's intuitive. And that the reason why it's intuitive is because intuition is the only way to tap into the primordial sensors that are already there. You have all these here, and this is why you need fieldings of shame. They're giving you the feedback. I'm telling you, I think that you would feel something akin to shame if you were about to run into the door. Because part of your limbic system would predict what emotions are going to happen if I fucking ram my knee into this thing right here. And so if you're in touch with that emotional body, you're going to be able to sense that and that intuitively this is what's happening in the blind sight patient. You're listening to James Drew. The eyes can still blink and dilate despite no retinal input. And that this skill is, is so much more superior in monkeys. That a monkey can just do this. It doesn't have to think about it. Do you know why? Because it's directly tapped into its intuition all the time. It's an animal mind. Now, I, I throw around the frontal cortex a lot, or the neocortex, and, and just to be simple, I tend to tell you, or you might have thought that I'm telling you humans are the only ones. That's not true. It's just that we have such an enlarged one. So much more is in our, our, our frontal lobe. So I just want to clarify that because I thought about it the other day in the shower. James, hurry. This is where I want you to think about, because... When you start to embrace intuition, you're going to need to get to this part. There's a difference between telepathy and empathy. I'm not here to bash telepathy, but I'm here to tell you there's a difference. And that, that when you look at modern science, we're always trying to get telepathy. We're always trying to get telepathy. But really, we, we, it's, it's empathy that we already have. It's empathy that we run away from. And so I've... I've I've, I've contrasted these two things because both of these are wireless sonar. And the first word is active versus passive. Telepathy is an active kind of sonar. Are you thinking about me, says the telepath? The passive sonar is what are you thinking? Do you see the difference? What would someone be thinking? Not are you thinking about me? What is this person thinking? The telepath will extract data. The empath will commune with it. The, the empath doesn't want to leave. The empath wants to become. The telepath is a laser. The empath is a mirror. The telepath is seen. The empath is felt. The telepath is proven. The empath is practiced. The telepath is hunt. The empath is gather. The telepath is deduce. The empath is intuit. The telepath emits, the empath absorbs. When you truly understand the difference between the obelisk and the pool, this is the obelisk is the telepath, and the empath is the pool. Remember, sorry, I just love to do that. But telepath, empath. I'm not trying to dismiss one. I'm trying to say that, that, that we tend to pretend we don't have this and we tend to dismiss this. We will call someone weak because they have emotions. And what you should do is say, this person is high re resolution. 
and that everyone who's trying to to pin down what autism is could easily also be said, maybe they fucking have higher resolution. Maybe the higher resolution, they have problems putting up with people that are wandering around in fucking 2K. You know? That you have a society in 2K, now you have these 8K kids, and they're like, that's not green, dude. That's like, that's like mauve at best. Why are you calling that green? Why are you fucking doing this? And, th- and th- that's what we're watching right now. This is the heart of what's happening. We have an airship tonight at 7. I'd love to see you. Great if you want to come by. You can argue with me. 